Okay, how's everybody doing today? Uh, in this video I want to show you another knife review. It's been a little while, so um, let's jump into it. Uh, this knife's got a uh, pretty special history for me. Um, this was my dad's knife. This is the uh, Puma White Hunter from Germany. Um, made in Solingen, uh, Germany. Comes in a box like this. You've got uh, the leather sheath uh, with the snap closure, the single snap there. Pull this thing out. Now this knife has some history because this was um, my dad's favorite knife uh, ever. And um, it's because this is the one he carried in Vietnam. And uh, I'm not sure what the story was, uh, why he had this. Uh, I think some of the people were using, some of the soldiers were using K-bars or something. And there was like an upcharge where he had to buy it if he wanted this one. And he did, and he got it. Uh, I don't remember the story exactly, but um, I think that's kind of the gist of it. He paid extra so he could have this knife. Um... So anyway, and he loved this knife. He carried it through the jungles in Vietnam and used it for everything. Uh, the, the problem with it was that when he was leaving Vietnam, they wouldn't let him take anything with him. So the knife that he had invested in, he couldn't actually leave with it and take it home. Um, that's that's the story as I can remember it. I know he told me uh, he told me about it, um, but I'm trying to I'm trying to get the facts uh, correct for you. Anyway, uh, he loved the knife though. He he remembered it um, decades later, and he said, "Man, he always wanted another one of those knives, the Puma White Hunter." So he found one and then oh yeah and in the meantime the price went crazy on uh, online you know uh, it went it went pretty uh pretty goofy and he just couldn't get himself to to spend that kind of money to get the knife again but he found a deal one day on it and he picked it up so uh he showed it to me with great pride and said that uh one day this knife would be mine, and um, he passed it down to me. So, anyway, here it is. Uh, so, um, I can't actually sell this knife. Uh, you know, it's it was <laughs> it was special to him, and now it's special to me. Um, so, so the let's let's do a, a, a little bit in the specs. Uh, we've got ten and a half inch. Uh, knifed in total got about a six inch blade they say six and an eighth but the bottom of the blade isn't actually blade anyway uh you've got the finger choil here with uh jimping you've got a finger guard to keep your hand off the blade uh there is a serration right here uh where you can you can start a cut and i think that's like if you have to saw through bone for hunting and uh, tendon and stuff, that would be a good area there. Uh, the front is rounded for skinning game, uh, which I actually have done. Um, not with this knife though. Uh, the front of the blade is uh, flat, uh, and I believe that's for batoning. So if you've got a split wood, you've got a flat surface to hit with another stick. Uh, of course, the stag, natural stag handle. Uh, full tang construction. This is not a pencil tang. Um, it goes all the way through with through the entire handle. Uh, the knife's about eight and a half ounces. So not, not very heavy. Uh, you could easily carry this backpacking. Um, and then they give you a nice made uh, leather sheath with a belt loop. Uh, they do test this with, um, uh, right here, there's a tiny little divot. Let me see if we can see that. Uh, there it is, a little divot in the blade. That is the hardness tester. It's hardened to uh, 
between 55 and 57 Rockwell hardness. Uh, it's also a stainless blade. Uh, this one is. I think the originals were a carbon steel blade, um, but at some point they transitioned to a stainless steel, and I think it's a uh, 440A stainless. Um, easy to sharpen, uh, it has a nice edge, but it's also very corrosion resistant, so that's nice. <clears throat> Anyway, just wanted to show you that and tell you a little story. Uh, it's funny, the uh, the guy he got it off of, his receipt's still in here. So, Albert, if you're out there watching, I got your knife now. <laughs> Albert bought it in uh, 01 and uh, must have not had a use for it after he had it for a little bit. And uh, my dad bought it from him. So um, Now you see these things online for... Kind of crazy money, uh, all different prices around, but uh, 350 uh, US dollars tends to be the the low price nowadays. Um, but it is a very nice, well-made knife. Um, my dad said a lot of the guys were sharpening the spine, or or theirs had a sharpened spine, but due to some kind of regulations like like a dagger law or something you can't have two sharpened edges uh sold to you that way so you can sharpen the edge yourself once you get it but the back edge is not sharpened otherwise uh, the front edge now is very sharp um, the germans know how to sharpen a knife uh, the back edge puma says that's for like your chopping tasks there's a lot of weight in the front of the blade so you can chop and uh, you're going to get a good amount of force here, like for uh, breaking up kindling or anything to start a fire. Or cracking through bone in the case of uh, hunting duties. Um, so you can save your highly sharpened edge for more delicate tasks like skinning, cutting up meat, that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's the knife. Uh, thanks for watching. And I've got a couple more that uh, I'm going to show you about my dad's knives. Uh, he watched my channel and uh, he liked my knife reviews, so I got a couple little stories for you. Alright, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.